Welcome to 30 Minute Reviews. I am Adam. Today is... What is today? Today is Tuesday. Is he... Uh... 12th? Yeah. 12th. And the 14th is Thursday. That is... A birthday. Kind of coming up. You ever sleep wrong and your neck just hurts? <laughs> That's where I'm feeling today. Um... <clears throat> so... What do we have today on today's itinerary? Um, well, I don't know why we as a society haven't come up with a way to make mulch not smell incredibly shitty. Like, it is one of the most disgusting smells, and every year, all these places are like, we need new mulch, we need new mulch. And every year, every parking lot, every supermarket, and every, like, you know, neighborhood... It's just this disgusting smell of just rotting and decay, and it's, it's just gross. I don't understand how we haven't figured out how to not do that yet. Um, it is kind of nasty, and, and, and it's just one of those things that's like, I, I leave my house, and it's like, why the fuck do we need this? Why the fuck do we need this smell? Because it's like, it's not even like it's a good smell, or, or like an okay smell, or it's like, a byproduct of something really important, like, because, or, or, like, even not important, where it's, like, you know, like, like, pot's been legalized in New York now, so we get a, you can smell it a lot, and it's, like, look, pot's not important, pot's not something that, you know, you need to have a particular, you know, like, it, it doesn't, like, I mean, it's got medicinal purposes, but it doesn't do anything that, that, um, like, is absolutely necessary, but, like, at least you know that, like, you know, there's someone who got high at the other end of it, it's like, and what, you, you got new mulch, so it just looks darker than it did before, like, is topsoil really that much more expensive, I, I don't know, like, is topsoil really that much more expensive to, to get for, for your, you know, to, to make your, like, I, I understand the purpose of it, because it's like, the darker the mulch, the more flowers planted in the mulch, or, or, you know, that are now surrounded by the mulch, will pop, so, like, if you, if you have these, like, islands in the parking lot, if you fill them with mulch, you'll have flowers that really, like, pop, and, and they're like, oh, that looks cool, and looks nice, and, you know, the flowers are looking great, and, and all of these, you know, awesome things, and it's like, well, what's the point, like, I, I just don't understand, like, why would someone get mulch, unless it is substantially more expensive than, like, topsoil, which is also very dark, and will equally make them pop, and it also has the fertilizer in it, like, it just doesn't make sense to me, so, and it doesn't stink, and it's like, if you're going into a supermarket, why would you want to go into a supermarket with the smell of, like, manure, or, like, decaying stuff, it's like, it always just smells bad, and then it's like, what happens is, I end up thinking, like, is it just, that, like, it runs its course and it doesn't smell bad anymore, or have I kind of, like, you know, just forgotten about the smell, like, you get used to it after a certain point, but it's like, no, you don't get used to it, if, it doesn't matter when it happens, you'll still smell it, like, wh why is it necessary, is the question I have. So, we're not here to talk about the, you know, the disgusting smell of mulch that is permeating everything and, and making... The entire world smell worse um, for the duration of its, you know, time for the next few weeks. Uh, we're here to talk about Fantastic Beasts and Fantastic Beasts 2 because this week on Thursday, um, Fantastic Beasts 3 comes out. I'm going Friday because, again, Thursday, birthday. Um, so, yeah, so I think that... Um, it's time to revisit these two movies. Now, I've watched both of these movies again lately um, to kind of get a sense of where we are, where we're going, because quite honestly, there's a lot I didn't remember from these movies. And this, the first, I like, Crimes of Grindelwald was the first Harry Potter Wizarding World movie that I did not watch in a theater um, since, like, Sorcerer's Stone. And that was because me going to see Sorcerer's Stone was contingent on, like, what was it, 2000? So, six-year-old me, seven-year-old me getting someone to drive and pay for the ticket. Um, and, and maybe it was 
2001. But either way, I was I was under 10 at the time. But this one, it's just, it didn't grab me. There was nothing about Crimes of Grindelwald. Like, after the first one, I was like, I could probably skip this. And, and to be fair, like, despite the good things that are being said, um, coming out of critic screenings for, uh, Secrets of Dumbledore, I'm still not entirely on board with it. Like, I'm not watching this movie and being, like, I'm not looking forward to seeing the new one in the same way that even I was looking forward to Sonic, because at least Sonic 1 was incredibly entertaining. And Sonic 2, I was like, oh, maybe this will be equally entertaining. Like, and, you know, it's, you know, it, it, it succeeded in that. So, looking at, like, you know, looking at it in that regard and being like, oh, so herein lies the, you know, the the issue that I, that I find myself in, the conundrum that I have, is what is it about these movies that makes me not interested in this, considering I have liked Harry Potter since I was a young child, and it's like, you know, I remember when they announced Fantastic Beasts, um, it was like, oh, cool, they're doing a distant prequel, that will be interesting to see, and, you know, they're going to America, and they're going to introduce some new ideas, and, and then it's like, I watched the movie again, and, and this time, it's like, it's like when you watch The Force Awakens the first time, and you don't realize that it is an identical movie to A New Hope, um, because you're like, oh my god, I'm sitting in a movie theater, and there, and something that I never thought I would see again in a movie theater, unless I was going to a reissue of an existing movie, is happening, and it's, I'm sitting here, and up on the screen is an opening crawl that says Star Wars Episode 7, and I'm like, oh my god, this is something that I have dreamed about since I saw, since I saw Star Wars as a kid, and it's like, this is awesome, let's, you know, and, and it's that kind of thing where it's like, that first time viewing uh, Fantastic Beasts, which if you go over to Beware of Spoilers on Thursday, the episode that Peter and I did when Fantastic Beasts 1 came out, um, is, what's it called? Uh, is going up then. Um, so you'll be able to hear our thoughts on, on Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Um, so, for for this movie, so let's start with the first one. I think the first one has a kind of interesting concept where it's, you know, the idea is he's going to America on... Uh, and, and here's part of the problem, is it's Maybe it's the fact that I've read the books over and over again, so I know the books a lot better. But I can tell you the exact plot of every single Harry Potter book and every single Harry Potter movie uh, from memory. Um, I've seen this movie, like, three times, maybe four times. And I can't for the life of me tell you what happened. Like, what like what was his purpose in going to America? And it's like, you know, he's got to go through customs, and he's got, you know, this briefcase that's got all of these magical creatures in it, and, like, apparently he's also, like, and that's part of the problem in 2, is that he's also human trafficking, um, because, like, he brings a woman with him in the suitcase, and it's like, oh, that's definitely not legal, um, and it's like, the first one's enjoyable enough, I think that that's part of it, the first one is enjoyable enough, where it's like, alright, like, it's kind of like what I've said about Star Wars, where it's like, look, if I have to choose between bad Star Wars and no Star Wars, I'll take bad Star Wars, because bad Star Wars is better than no Star Wars. I'd rather have good Star Wars, but if I can't have that, you know, you take what you can get. So, with Fantastic Beasts, I think that, that was kind of the case, even though there is a, a tonal distant dissonance between scenes at times, like, and I remember thinking it at the time, being like, oh, that's a little weird. Like, in this movie, like, and this is always a thing I'm going to point to and be like, this is just poor scene construction, um, or poor pacing, is in between scenes, in one scene, you have Credence getting abused by his adoptive parents, the bare bones, and, you know, they're, they're abusive, they're horrible, this, that, the other thing, you know, like, that, that happens in one scene. The very next scene after that is in Central Park Zoo, and it's 
um, what's his name, Newt, trying to entice a rhino, um, into, like, a, a magical rhino into a suitcase by, by doing, like, what's it called, by doing a, um, uh, a mating dance, by imitating the mating dance, and it's like, it's, it's meant to be a comedic scene as he's doing this, and it's like, well, yeah, but, like, can we get a little bit of space between the emotional, like, you know, like, the important scene of, uh, what's it called, of, um, uh, of, uh, Credence being abused, and, and this, like, that need you need to have some space, some distance between those would be very helpful, um, and then, like, the resolution is, like, oh, and Grindelwald wanted to use the Obscurial, so he tried to get Credence, so he could use Credence as an Obscurial, and it's, like, okay, cool, I guess, like, and the, and the whole thing with the Obscurial is probably the, thi- the probably some of the thinnest veiled um, symbolism in anything J.K. Rowling has ever done, where it's like, oh, he's closeted, that's what it's meant to, to be. Like, and, and like, the, the, the second Salemers, or whatever the hell they're called, are meant to be, like, the eva- eva- evangelicals. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, considering what's happened since, um, I think it's fair to say pandering, considering that it's obvious that J.K. Rowling doesn't share the opinions that she's espousing in the movie. Like, that's the thing. If you're, if you're out there and you genuinely believe it and you're going to go out there and, and you're going to make these statements, by all means, do that. Have, have a blast. Do whatever you want. Like, my problem is I just watched a Tesla almost cause two accidents with tracks. Um, but if you're going to, like, if you're not going to do it properly, don't, don't, like, if you, if you, if you don't actually believe it, it, it's just hollow. Um, so then Fantastic Beasts 2 comes along, um, which is called Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, which is, instead of, you know, being about Newt and, and his, you know, his, his band of merry men, it's about, really it's about, you know, the issue with Dumbledore and Grindelwald. And... It's this idea that, you know, these two can't move against each other. And then it's like, well, why? They don't really explain it. But I think that that vial has something to do with it. Um, Where it's like, if that vial is broken, eventually he'll be able to move against Grindelwald. Uh, But he needs to, that vial needs to break first. Because, I don't know, it's probably like an unbreakable vow or some nonsense like that. Um, and, And it's like, oh... Wouldn't that have just solved this problem a little bit cleaner if they did an unbreakable vow not to move against each other? Because you can't break that. And, like, that that's the problem. Is like, all of this nonsense is just, like, if you just do that, which you've established already, it would make, you know, it would, it would make a lot more sense and it would work a little bit better. And it's just so silly to me. Um, so that all kind of happens. And, and it's like... There's a lot of other questionable things. Like, the idea of Queenie suddenly wanting to be like, oh, I, um, like, I want to be with Jacob, but the only way to do that is to give him what's it called, is to give him a, uh, a, this person is running down the middle of the street. Um, the only way to be with Jacob is to give him a love potion. Like, it, it feels kind of silly to me. And, and to be like, you know, oh, well, we got to, uh, like, that that's dumb. And then, like, a good amount of the movie is spent reuniting the team and getting back to Tina and getting, like, the, them back together. And then there's the whole Letta Lestrange thing, which is like, well, why are we bothering with this? Like, I, I watched that movie now for a second time, and the first time I watched the director's cut... And I still can't tell you what the significance of Letta Lestrange is in this whole thing, besides they gave Zoe Kravitz a role where she's got very little to do, and then she just dies. And it's like, well, what the fuck? Why am I watching this? Um, 
And then the, the Nagini, the Nagini thing also kind of annoys me, um, because it's like he, like, like the idea that Nagini is actually this, I want to say Indonesian girl, if I remember correctly, she's from Indonesia, um, who is a maledictus who's kind of like an animagus, but if they do it, eventually one time they do it, they won't be able to change back. And it does completely change the, you know, like, the paradigm of Harry Potter. It's one of those things where it's like, it, it's one of those small things where it's like, oh, like, is Nagini actually Dumble like Voldemort's friend, or is he, like, or is she, is she like, you know, just there because it's like, oh well, I'm, I'm a snake and I need something to do, like, it it, it changes that entirely. Um, it, it like the fact that he puts the um, what's it called? He puts the uh, um, the the Horcrux into her has entirely new meaning now. It's just. There's a lot there that needs to be unpacked that it feels like when she had this idea, the implications of executing this idea were not thought through enough. Um, which is kind of an, an important part of something like this. Like, you need to have... When you, when you come up with an idea that's this, you know, bold and... and I don't even want to say bold, but if it's this big, with this many moving parts, you, you do kind of need to have it kind of fleshed out. And, like, what is the impact on the rest of the story by making this change? And then, like, like my, my the problems with the third act being slow and, and being weird and all of that don't necessarily bother me, because it's like, oh, well... Why is it, you know, like, she's a, she's a novelist, she's not a screenwriter, so, like, what would work in a book, like, that ending would work in a book, um, and it feels like a Harry Potter ending, like, it feels like an ending of one of the Harry Potter movies, because if you, if you watch the movies, even, the endings are all very dialogue driven, um, and it feels kind of like that, um, but still, it's not a great movie. Um, hopefully Fantastic Beast 3 kind of breaks the streak and can be something good, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll wrap up there for today. Um, we'll be back, uh, with any news as it happens, and we'll be back with, um, new episodes, um, of Beware of Spoilers later this week. So until then, have a great rest of your week.